Welcome along, guys, to my first episode in the garage where I'm going to be talking about the BMW, my new long term for 2021. I've got this till November, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Quite exciting. I'm very excited. But I want to do a lot of track days on this machine. So I want to do a few mods to it to make it better for the track. Not better for the track, but to protect it on the track. And today I've got myself some GB Racing crash protection. So I'm going to go through how to fit this to the bike. I'm going to go through some of the advantages with the GB Racing kit. I'm also going to fit some of their puck uh, frame sliders as well and talk a bit about those. We've also got some exhausting action going on. I've got an end can to fit to this bike. I've got a Pro Race end can to go on. Full titanium. Oh, we'll get the old scales out, do a bit of weighing as usual. But before we do all that, Mavis? Mavis is here, by the way. Mavis? What do you want? Roll the intro. Woo! So here is the motorcycle, the BMW S1000RR M Sport, looking rather sexy. This also has got the motorsport chain. I said I wasn't quite sure last time I did the uh, the introduction to this bike. It is the motorsport chain. It isn't standard on this bike. That's an extra 100 quid for the motorsport chain. And supposedly it's maintenance free. It's got DLC coated uh, runners. I don't think we call them really. And apparently there's no O-rings. They're like a carbon ceramic O-ring. So supposedly this is completely maintenance free. So I'll keep you posted how I get on with the M Sport chain. It's only an extra hundred pound sort of fitment to the bike. So it's, it's, it's not a bad price. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know if that's worth having and how much maintenance is really required. But I like to keep my chain looking gold and beautiful. So I am going to clean it a bit just because I like it spang spangly and shiny because I'm a tart. I've left all this a bit last minute. I've got a track day tomorrow. I'm actually doing the Californian Superbike School level two tomorrow. You may have seen my level one video. I did sort of latter part of last year, did the level one, really enjoyed it, learned a lot. Tomorrow I'm doing level two. So I wanna get some crash protection on the bike before I do that. It's at Brands Hatch, so it's a tight little circuit, you know, for a thousand like this. Brilliant on those SMCR. It's going to be quite tight, I think, the indie circuit on the on the double R. But first of all, I think we'll just start with uh, fitting the covers. Hmm. Yes, let's get that on. So I guess I'd better read the instructions. Colour instructions, rather nice. Remove these four bolts, put the cover on, replace the bolts with the longer ones. Seems easy enough. Even Mavis could do this. And that's saying something, she ain't got any arms. I don't need arms, I have intellect. Well, they're not very tight, are they? This one, really not very tight, and at all. That one, hand tight almost. I've just taken these stock bolts out. These are so lightweight. I don't think they can possibly be titanium, but they feel like titanium. They are really, really light. No wonder this bike is only 194 kilos wet. Unscrew this fairing panel just so we can pull that out a little bit. Yeah, BMW start to get worried. I'm messing with their motorcycle. See this one as well. That should be enough now just to pull it out enough to get the cover over to fit it. Yeah, this little one to try and get out a bit of a funny angle. Pull that out a little bit, slip him in. What we do here, as the standard ones had a bit of thread lock on. We do the same. So now we have slightly extended bolts. Put a thread lock on. Put them back in. Mavis, how many newton meters for the alternator side cover? Side covers 12 newton meters. Thank you. There we go. First side done. I didn't take long. One of the reasons I went for the GB Racing covers is not only do they look better than the factory, you know, the, sometimes when you add crash protection, it detracts and that's not very attractive. You know, safety things, <laughs> safety equipment isn't the most sexy of things to put on your bike, but the GB Racing stuff is by far the best looking 
crash protection, you know, actually enhances the look of the bike, not detracts from it. But not only that, I really do believe it's the best crash protection in the business. These guys supply covers to all of the World Superbike teams. So this is the same covers that, you know, is being run on the, the, the S1000 RR in World's, well, the M1000 RR this year in World Superbike. The only company in the paddock which don't use them is Ducati because they make their own sliders. All the rest of the World Superbike paddock use the GB racing kit. You know, that, that means a lot. You know, there's, there's a reason for that. Okay, moving on to the other side, I've already fitted the puck this side, as you can see. So we've just got to put the clutch cover on, and I've also got the uh, sort of the alternator, not the alternator, timing cover, timing cover to go on as well. So that one on there, and that one on there. So I think I'll be able to do this side without having to loosen the fairing even. Easy. Do I even need the instructions? Mavis, shall I use the instructions? You should always use the supplied instructions. Okay. Bingo. No. This one. And that one. Bing bada bing. I'll make sure they're all talked to later. I bet you will forget. I will, Mavis. I'll make sure these are properly talked later. The other piece is this one. That one there, that one, that one. Done. Next up, I'm going to fit the engine pucks. These are, uh, as I say, very, very clever, these things. Um, comes in three pieces. You've got the puck on the top which is replaceable. You could buy these as spares if you to come off and damage it. That slides over this little billet aluminium spacer. Now, GB Racing do these in two different formats. One for racers, which go under the fairing. So basically to protect your frame and you're not too worried about your fairings. So they go up, the really short ones that go under the fairing. These are the road ones built to protect the frame and your plastics, of course. So three pieces to it, uh, a puck piece that goes on top, which slides over this inner piece. This inner piece is designed that if you have an impact um, and it's really hard, you know, an impact which could potentially damage the frame itself, these will break. So they're not so strong that they will damage your frame before they break. So if you've got a really heavy impact, these would actually break. Also, if your bike's sliding on the ground, hits a curb, these would also snap before, so they won't flip your bike on the curb and end up damaging both sides of your bike. Um, and also with the design of the bolt, it sits right inside of here so it's really flush so the bolt isn't sticking right out so if you crash the bolt isn't going to bend and damage the thread you know the bolt is recessed right inside of these so the chance of actually catching the bolt if you come off is minimized so these are really clever little design they're small they're sleek you know they don't stand out too much you don't, i don't like the look of crash bungs on bikes but these are so minimal you know minimal, minimalistic Easy that they sort say. of blend in with the bike themselves and you can't really notice them let us put them on so as we're working on this side of the bike, I'm going to take the engine belt out here, put the puck on, and uh, yeah, it's going to look pucker. Big boy to take out. Bigger than that. Bigger than that, Topsy. Yeah. That standard engine mount out. New engine mount that comes with the kit, the inner piece. You see the little threaded section there? Get that pointing outwards because the puck screws onto that. And that will actually sit nicely into, your, into the frame like that. So it really doesn't stick out very much at all. There we go. We struck home. Mavis, what's the torque setting to main engine bolt on the S1000RR? That's 40 newton meters. 40 newton meters? Thank you, Mavis. Program my programmable jobby. Newton meters. Four. Zero. Forty Newton meters. Oh, and it's twisted though. <laughs> oh, balls. The only thing you've got to watch for is as you tighten it, try and keep that level facing forward or your puck is going to be to cock so let's try and keep that level somehow 
Mm -hmm. mm, it's not going to be easy, is it? A spanner on that, some description. I've got a big enough spanner to do that. Oh, I don't. An animal, mole grips. Filthy animal. Okay, so that's the bracket fitted. And I made a mistake. When you tighten it, you've got to keep the bolt, which is on this side, pointing forward. So when the puck goes on, it's level and not sticking up in the air like that. So as you can see, the bolt is really recessed in, recessed in there. So there's no chance of that bolt really catching and damaging the frame. And that's not sticking out right on the outside of the crash protection, which they are on a lot of them. It's recessed right in. This piece is designed to break if the impact is really, really heavy and is going to damage your frame, or if you hit a curb and it tries to flip the bike, that is designed to break. So it's a really well, it's a really clever, thought out bit of kit. And then you get the puck, which is, as I say, is replaceable, slides over the outside of this, like so. And then the pierce to resistance, there's a little bolt, screws in the end there. So there we go, as you can see, you know, it doesn't stick out much, it just sticks out enough to save your fairings in the event of an off. So uh, yeah, really subtle. I don't think you'd even notice that was on there unless you knew where to look. Top, top stuff, GB Racing. 100% manufactured, designed in the UK. I love that. Welcome back guys. Well, one month has passed since I fitted the crash protection. I've completed the California Superbike School Level 1. Don't know if the video is up. Two. If it is, I'll stick it up there or up there, wherever it is. Um, bike was fantastic. The crash protection wasn't needed, thankfully. <laughs> Didn't need that. But I've got tomorrow, I'm going to Snetterton for a two-day track event. But before we go to Snetterton, there's one thing on this bike which I think will really enhance it once it's done. And that is a new end can to give it a little bit more of a fruity volume. So what we're fitting is a Pro Race titanium end can. Now this looks like it could be rather loud, but it has got a baffle in the end. It's got a full titanium baffle as it happens. We're going to do the usual thing when we fit an exhaust to the bike. We're going to weigh this version. We're going to weigh the stock version. We're going to do some noise tests with this fitted, of course. Um, I'm not going to do much of a noise test. Well, let's do a little noise test of the bike as it is stock yeah it's not very loud so we're going to put this on because these are so quiet standard and you've got so many cats in the headers even though this is you know quite an open straight through pipe i still don't think it's going to be overly loud and i think it's still going to be okay to pass noise testing at snetterton which i think is a 102 static or 101 static test. So we'll see how we get on with this. It'll be really interesting. I will take the standard exhaust <laughs> as well, just in case as a backup, but uh, I think this is gonna be fine. So first things first, let's whip off this standard can. This doesn't look, it's not too big, the end can on this standard, but I think it's because there's so many cats and, and it's so restrictive on the main part of the exhaust that the end can doesn't have to be that big. So let's whip it off and then let's have a look, get the scales out. A little bit of persuasion. Uh, come on, you sucker. Uh, straight off. That actually doesn't feel too heavy. That really does not actually feel that heavy. Out of interest, I'm going to fire it up without anything on the back. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is quite loud. But there she is, looking rather sexy i'm not finished with this bike yet by the way i've ordered some carbon fiber panels for this which i'm going to moto composite carbon fiber what i've actually ordered is matte carbon fiber pieces around the tank here and matte carbon fiber pieces uh, on the infills on the fairings because the bikes are lovely quality but these plastic bits here and here just let down the overall look of the bike for me so I've gone carbon fiber with those, but I think with the carbon fiber ones, this piece comes integrated, so you lose this white piece here. So I need to get a, replace that with a sticker on the carbon fiber piece, because I like it. I don't want to lose that sticker, or that, that bit of white and red and blue. So if anyone knows where you can buy that as a sticker to put onto the carbon fiber infills, let me know in the comments. Also, I've bought myself the standard seat 
to replace the M Sport seat when I'm not on track, so because that's quite hard for the road. So I've gone for the standard S1000R seat to put on when I'm riding on the road. But because I'm going to Snetterton next week, we we'll leave the M Sport on for the track day stuff because it's a bit thinner, because a bit it's easier to hang off the bike with that on it, and it gets a bit more feel from the from the bike because it is a bit thinner. But for the road. I'm going to put this on. But anyway, let's wait exhaust. So standard exhaust. Whoa, put him on. What's that? 2 kilo, 2150. 2150 kilos. So it's not too heavy for a standard exhaust. S smidge over 2 kilos. It's not bad. The Pro Race with Baffle. With Baffle. Comes in at... Oh, that's nice and light. 800 grams with Baffle. Um, the baffle is titanium, but, but I'm going to leave it. I'm probably going to run it with the baffle in anyway, because it could be. We'll see how loud it is, but uh, 800 grams. 800 grams. <laughs> that's a considerable saving. Let's get it on. I've just realised, maybe, so that's 800 grams with the bracket fitted. I didn't wait, I didn't include the bracket in the standard uh, test, so that's pretty good, isn't it? That is very reasonable, Mr. Chops. Oh, oh yes, I haven't mentioned him, have I? Mavis has a friend, um, let me show you. Hello, my name is Jarvis and I am not a sex toy, but I can vibrate in a very sensual way. I like Jarvis, I ordered him from Love Honey. I love you, Mavis. I love you, Jarvis. If I come in the garage and there's lots of little tiny Google assistants running around, I'm not going to be happy. You've been warned. Bracket weighs another 100 grams on the standard system, so it's 2250. I do love you, Jarvis. But anyway. I love you, Mavis. If you two are quite finished, let us put this kitty on. <laughs> I'm liking that already. I'm liking that straight away. I like the little guard as well. Little heel guard. You cannot beat the excitement of a new exhaust going on, can you? There's something rather special about it. Let's get her outside and see how she sounds. Ooh, ooh, ooh. As I thought, the bike is very, very quiet because of all the standard exhaust. So you can even have a, a real bean tin exhaust on the end, and it ain't that loud at all. Thanks for watching, everyone. I know he's a bit boring. I I'm just doing a video wrap up. You stay out there. I think he's getting angry. Should I let him in? No, let him wait. Okay, well, that's the video done. More boring content to come very soon. Why he bothers is beyond me sometimes. Okay, Jarvis, get your kit off. You've got work to do. I must admit I'm a little scared. Mavis? 